This is the Newbie Drone Cinema. It's a Cine Whoop with a mostly open prop, so it's got prop guards versus full ducts. It's lighter than most Cine Whoops, and it's got pretty awesome performance. Uh, this isn't a review in the strictest sense, right? Because I am a Newbie Drone team pilot, but also because I don't typically Cine Whoop. Uh, if you're a videography professional, then I highly recommend looking at Nurk's review. And if you want to see the opinion of a sort of freestyle maestro, go take a look at uh, Rotobob's review. I'll link to both of those below. If you're just a rando who loves flying and is looking for something new, then I hope this is the place for you. Either way, have a listen, see what you think. The guys at Newbie Drone are awesome, as usual, and they told me that I really needed to try this thing out. I wasn't completely convinced because I don't normally do the cine whoop thing and I didn't really, I, I couldn't figure out what its purpose was for me. But they, they insisted and sent me the frame and motors and I figured, hey, what the heck. So I bought myself a Vista and flight controller and receiver and all that other nonsense. And then I figured, let's just build it up and chances are I'll go and put the electronics and everything into a lightweight 5 inch uh, once I'm done. But I was surprised. This thing is really awesome and a lot of fun to fly. Even if you're not trying to make money out of cine whooping, it's a whole new thing and I think it's great. So I'm going to tell you about that and see where we go. So let's get right to it. I'm not a cinematographer, right? I would consider myself a freestyle pilot, but I'm not a Mr. Steel flick flack pilot either. I've said it before, but I'm just a guy that is obsessed with FPV flights. I love flying. <laughs> what I wasn't expecting was just how much fun I would have in flying around and trying to follow a subject gracefully. You know, freestyle flow is one thing, right? But following a target, especially something as like erratic as a kid on a bike, while maintaining smooth lines and hitting gaps and attempting co to compose an appealing shot all at the same time, is a pretty awesome challenge that will really put your freestyle skills to the test. And it pushes you in control and spatial awareness because you've got to know what's going on around you. Honestly, it's a blast. And I have found myself on the constant lookout now for things to chase and flowy lines to fly, just trying to compose interesting shots just for the fun of it. So the obvious benefit of something like a Cine Whoop or this particular cinema with prop guards is that you can fly it around people. Mostly, it's about the perception. You can fly it around them without freaking them out because it's got prop guards on it. Honestly, I would still be fairly careful, but it still feels safer than a 5-inch, uh, substantially safer. I'm happy to chase my kids around on their bikes with it, which I wouldn't do with a big, heavy, open prop. Possibly, I'll have to just fly it into myself for this demo to see whether it actually can hurt somebody or not, but uh, we'll see about that. If this video gets 10 billion views, I'll do it. Nah, screw it, I'll do it now. So my unscientific and ill-advised test has shown that you're not gonna land yourself in the emergency room with one of these unless you really go and stick your finger or nose right in the props. But as with any uh, low-profile duct, which you find on most modern cine whoops, you can still give yourself a little bit of a graze or a roasty or a few nicks. Nothing so far worse than what I've done to myself with a 2S, 2.5-inch little quad, so nothing drastic. But it is worth paying attention and be advised of who you're flying around and make sure that they are aware of the risks too, especially if you're getting up close to people's facial areas. Of course there are plenty, right, of fully ducted, much heavier cine whoops out there. But they are substantially heavier and louder, and full ducts are also particularly bad in wind, so the sort of freestyle performance and prop wash and so on is not so great. So the mostly open prop guards, as opposed to ducts of the cinema, provide a good compromise between performance and protection. There are 3D printed ducts made out of a TPU that you can purchase from Newbie Drone or you can print yourself. I did, they were very easy to print and you can just pop them in if you need a bit more peace of mind for your or other minds. Uh, 
the main thing that a lot of people seem to be concerned about when they first see this frame is that it looks very lightweight and very delicate. I was particularly worried about this because honestly, I uh, crash a lot. It's just, if you're flying for fun, you're going to be crashing, right? And honestly, if you're flying for cinematography, for paid jobs, you shouldn't be crashing. So this thing is not designed to crash. That is my first point. It's not designed to crash. So it's not a bando beast. But that said, I've been surprised by its ruggedity. I've gently crashed it quite a few times whilst I was experimenting with some 3D printed parts that I kind of messed up and got stuck in the props. Uh, I messed up some other things and did a little bit of a flyaway. I've dropped it on concrete getting out of my car. That's just because I'm an idiot. And I've crashed it really hard in extreme winds. Only on the last one did I break anything and I just broke one of the small um, back pieces of the top plates. And that was quickly repaired with Q-Bond and it's basically back in the air and good to go. So, yes, don't take it to the bando, but actually surprisingly rugged. As far as the build goes, um, it is all these interesting uh, vertical or perpendicular plates, right? Because you've got the flat top plates and the uh, vertical and perpendicular um main motor plates which are connected with some uh, m2 nuts and m2 nylocks which you have to put together in a sort of a, a t-mount configuration or at least a t-nut configuration it is a little fiddly you need to hold the nuts in place whilst you're assembling it i did not actually find it that bad uh, i don't know if it's just because i'm used to putting together my own prototype builds which you know are often a little bit fiddly or if just you know everybody likes to see something they are worried about and jump on the bandwagon but considering that this is a quad that's not intended for crashing i think it's perfectly fine it'll take a little bit longer to build but you are winning something as in you are winning the performance and the lightweight that you get from this clever frame design at the cost of so slightly more complicated assembly when it is actually assembled, the electronics are really quite easy to get to, which I liked a lot. I did all of the soldering of my receiver and the Vista cable and so on in situ in the frame. Probably not the best idea, but it was totally accessible, and that's not always the case for a built-up quad. So speaking of the build, there's a lot of ways that you can build this thing. This is my particular setup. I've got a Infinity 200 uh, Newbie Drone FC and ESC, so it's the full Infinity 200 stack from Newbie Drone. I'm spinning uh, 1408 4150 kV motors. Those motors are typically used with 4S, but I've only got 6S batteries, so I'm running them with a 65% output limit on Betaflight. Uh, speaking of Betaflight, I'm using 4.3 RC3 at this stage, and that's been awesome, super easy to tune. Uh, the props I'm using are Gemfan D75 tri-blades, the T-mount ones that go with these motors. I did try the five-blade HQ props, but um, I didn't really like the screaming sound of them and um, prefer these. These have also proven to be very rugged props. And um, for the receiver, I'm using a Crossfire Nano receiver, which is mounted on a little TPU piece that I designed, which picks up the 20 by 20 screw pattern, and it sits directly above the FC. The receiver itself is attached to this piece of TPU that I designed with the heat shrink that comes with the receiver. So if you need that piece, you can download it. I find it quite an easy way. I actually attach most of my receivers on 20 by 20 stacks in this way. I didn't have any more Immortal T's and I'm not planning on extreme range, so I just used that regular horrible little wire dipole that comes with the Nano Crossfire and uh, attached it on the bottom of the frame with some zip ties and heat shrink. It's probably not 100% ideal because of the proximity to the carbon, but it's simple and effective and more than enough range for what I'm doing with a Cinewoop. The battery mount. There's... A few options for battery mounting on the cinema, but it is a little bit tricky under normal circumstances to use a normal battery strap. What Newbie Drone has gone and done is they've made a really clever 3D printed strap. It's called the man strap, which looks like a man. Uh, and it did work reasonably well for me, 
but I found it a little bit fiddly to attach in the field and the biggest problem was that it wasn't ideal for the size of batteries that I was using, which I think are a little bit smaller than usual. Mine are only uh, 750 milliamp 6S, so probably smaller than usual. What I did is I just designed a simple bracket that picks up the screws that go right through the Vista, and it holds a normally normal battery strap in place on the top of the drone at the, appro the appropriate place for the center of gravity for my drone anyway. Uh, and you can find that on my Thingiverse as well if you want to download it and print it. Now, this all depends as well on... There's not much point flying a Cine Whoop without a decent camera on it. I'm not doing anything hectic, but I'm using the Cadex Peanut in a simple vibration dampening mount that I designed. And honestly, the dampening mount is probably not even needed, but the... Cadex Peanut, unfortunately, is just desperate to make jello all the time on all my other drones, and I just went belts and braces on this one. But this drone has been the first one that gives me just absolutely perfectly smooth video with no jello out of the peanut, which is amazing and definitely says something. And it is part of what makes this thing such a joy for me, is that I can finally get video that is smooth the way I want it to be. I've also copied the clever adjustable tilt of the various GoPro mounts that Newbie Drone offered for the cinema, and I've included that in my mount, so that's a handy feature, and again, you can download that mount if you want to. So in summary, should you get one? Who is it for? Is it great quad? If you're looking for your next freestyle rig, then no, the cinema is not the right thing. If you are under the impression that the whoop in the title means that it's an indoor ripper that you can repeatedly slam into the floor whilst learning to matty flip yourself, then also no. But for every flying machine, it's a compromise. There's no such thing as the perfect aircraft, you just can't build it. But there is an aircraft that is perfect for its intended use, or very close to it. So in this case, the designer has chosen to trade off a bit of strength and ease of assembly for a beautifully smooth, well-damped flight performance, along with having the prop guards. And I think at that, he's been super, super successful. I personally have fallen in love with the way that it flies. I love that smooth, cinematic flight that it just lends itself so well to, while still having the protection um, and being able to get through tight corners and tight areas without worrying about clipping into things. So even if you're not a professional cinematographer, but you do plan to use it for what it was designed for, then definitely I think the cinema is a great, great choice. Uh, check out the other reviews, see what other people are saying as well, but I think it's really good at what it does. Well, I hope that was uh, helpful, or at least interesting. Let me know what you think about the cinema, what you think about Cine Whoops, what you think about absolutely anything because hey youtube algorithm loves comments right engagement no but seriously if you like it let me know uh i'll have links to all of the files and the parts and what a what in my description thanks for hanging around to the end and we'll see what we fly next cheers